Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Danny. Hi, Danny. Hi. Danny has been on the podcast before, but for a totally different reason. <laughs> I worked with Danny at the salon and I don't know if you were in management then yet. I think, I don't want to say just a receptionist. So. I, I can't right. remember, I, but you were dealing about with um like shoplifters. That was the thing your story was yeah. when, when we talked about. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. but I noticed Danny, I'm cause we're friends and I noticed on her social media, she was starting to do like a side gig and I wanted to know all about it because I just think it's so smart and it's, uh, so relevant for the times, you know, uh, consumerism and all that. Okay. So dressed by Danny, <laughs> tell me how you came about that. Were you always a thrift store person? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like since high school like early high school probably because you know like I was raised like middle class like you know we didn't but we didn't have a ton of money um and so you know when you're in high school even like middle school like there's so much pressure on like these young girls to like wear what's in or like um you know be up to date with their styles especially like because I grew up like social media was just becoming like a parent like magazines have always been um, maybe like the pressure at one point, but um, when I was growing up, it was more like Instagram mm -hmm. kind of. And so like, you know, fashion is so readily on people's like fingertips. So um, yeah, like the only way that I was going to have access to clothes that I wanted was to go like find them. Like I didn't have the money to go buy them new. So like I, the only way I was going to find what I wanted um, and maybe have like a chance to um, get like some clothes that I or maybe a little nicer was to like go out and hunt for them. So yeah, yeah. yeah I, and I went through a huge phase where I was all about it. And my yeah. husband was like, why wouldn't you just rather have brand new? And I said, it's the thrill of the hunt. Like yeah. I'm going in there, I'm on a mission. I'm going to find something that some name brand, you know, I'm just going to find that little gold nugget in that place. Yes. Um, so that's got to be so rewarding to do that. But yeah. Can you find current in a lot of the thrift stores? Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely, you'd be surprised um, how many, cause like on my forums, I ask like, do you prefer vintage clothing, like older styles, or do you prefer modern? Um, and I've definitely been able to find more modern styles too. It just kind of depends, but uh, you'd definitely be surprised. I always tell people like, you'd be surprised what people give away because for X or Y reason, you know, they new tags. I find stuff new tags all the time. Just, just, you never know why people give something away. It's not their style. They got it for a gift, something like that. Or um, they got two of them. They got two of them. Yeah. Right. Like the brand or the source will, or sent two on accident or whatever. Like there's all sorts of reasons. Yeah. People are so lazy about sending stuff back. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, no, I, I have no problem sending stuff back, but people are lazy about it. So I could see where they'd be yeah. like, forget it. I'll just donate it. And it's like, what? Yes. <laughs> you right. don't need that money back. <laughs> I, I'm good with it. Your loss is my gain, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I, I, yep. Um, so are you noticing a trend with the people that you shop for? Are, are they looking for more vintage? They're all across the board. Okay. Um, I definitely have people who prefer vintage um, or like a vintage flair. Sometimes it's more that they just want like a little like hint, hint of vintage and um, uh, not like all vintage, um, but I, you know, they're all across the board. It's like, I don't really have, which makes it exciting. And for me, because I get to find like a whole, I get to flex my creative muscles and try to like find all sorts of different styles. Like, you know, nobody's the same, which is fun. Yeah. So what made you decide to start doing this for other people instead of just you going by yourself for yourself? Yeah. Um, well, when I was in college, um, I started selling, I started the page like years ago and I was selling like one item at a time because I would find something and I'd say like, you know, this isn't necessarily my style, but I know someone out there would really think that this is good or like it's a brand name, it's worth something. And so then I tried to sell it like over social media just one item at a time and that was fine but then I ended up getting too busy and kind of like letting it go a little bit so that account kind of like got to be a little bit more dormant um and it just wasn't as fun to do it that way so um and then, and then I started 
seeing on TikTok, you know, people doing the bundles and um, like actually like styling people and creating multiple outfits. And I was like, you know, that's a lot more personal. That's a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. I think that um, I'd have a lot more fun with that than doing just like the one item at a time. Yeah. So how does it work? Tell me like somebody contacts you through social media. And... Yeah, it's all social media based. Yeah. Okay. And okay. So some of these people, you, they might live in California or somewhere else and you just mail them the stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tell me how it works. Let's, they contact you and say, Hey, I want you to style me. What do you do? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I have a form that they fill out, um, and that's just in the bun or excuse me, that's just in the, um, my Instagram, um, like handle profile thing, mm -hmm. they go and they click on it and, um, they can fill out their sizing information. I ask them all sorts of questions. They can give me their measurements if they feel like that, if they want to. Um, they also can, I have a bunch of questions about what kind of styles they like, what colors they wear, what colors they don't like to wear. You know, do they like cropped clothing? Do they like tight clothing? Do they not? Do they, you know, just a bunch of like preference questions. Do they like pattern? Do they not like pattern? Um, and things like that. So they go through this whole questionnaire and then um, I reach out to them and with my options, my bundle options. Um, I have a menu. So my uh, mini bundle is five to eight pieces and that's a hundred dollars. Uh, my full bundle is 10 to 12 pieces. I think that one's 200. And then um, the maxi bundle is like 20 pieces. Wow. Um, and that one is 300. So it just kind of depends on how many pieces they want, how many outfits they want from them. Um, and yeah. So do they you just stay let me know. In, in contact with them? Like when you're shopping, do you like take a picture and say, is this close to the mark? Do you like this? Or is it all a surprise to them? It's a surprise. Um, I know some thrifters who are some people who are also doing this and they will stay in contact with their person, like send photos. I usually don't do that unless I'm really on the fence about something. Um, if I'm like, you know, I did, I have sent like a pattern before, like I won't show the entire piece. Like I had a jacket for one girl who she was like, I don't like um, blue. And so I had a flannel jacket with some blue in it. And so I sent her a picture of the pattern and I was like, is this, is this too much blue? Is this blue yeah. okay? And she ended up saying that it was fine. So then I sent her the jacket. Um, but I try to keep most of it a surprise. I think it's more fun that way. Um, and I make it really clear, like on the form, like, um, or when I am communicating with them that I try to, like, it's a surprise. You won't really know. If you, if they ask me, like, can I see some pictures? I will send the pictures. If they don't want it to be a surprise, like I will be transparent about that. It's your money. So um, whatever you want. But for the most part, I like to keep it a surprise. How does it work if they don't like it or if it doesn't fit? So on my form, I make it really clear that I don't do returns and I don't do exchanges um, just because like you are, you are taking a risk um, because you're having somebody else shop for you and it is a surprise. Um, but that's kind of the fun of it. Yeah. And so like, you know, you are, you, you they go into it knowing that it's a risk. Um, I have done exchanges and I have done um like returns before um be just because like typically I don't and I make it really clear that I typically don't but um there have been like one or two instances when I was first starting out where like I really wanted to get it right for that person so like I did kind of bend a little bit normally I haven't had to that's only been like one or two people um so it's, it doesn't never happen, but, um, typically I don't. Yeah. I think the surprise factor is fun, but it also like, do you scope the people out before like in seat, not just their Pinterest, but like them yeah. do you go on their like social their media? Yeah, no, I do just cause it's just to get like a feel of their lifestyle a little bit more. Um, but I, I've learned not to rely too heavily on that because, pictures can be so deceiving, especially in terms of like sizing, like sometimes they give you a good idea, but sometimes, you know, people just like look, I've, people are so many different shapes and sizes and sizing looks different on every body type. Mm -hmm. So, and so like, I will to kind of scope out like their lifestyle, maybe, you know, like they look like they do a lot of hiking. Like maybe I should throw in like a little you know, sports kind of, or more like outdoorsy element or something like that. But in general, I try to rely mostly on the, what they put in the form and not let my own like biases come in too much to it. Um, just because, 
yeah, people are going to be straight up about what their sizing is and what they want. And maybe they want to try something new. Like maybe they right. don't want to do their style that they have in their Instagram that they've been wearing forever. Like maybe they want to do a whole new vibe. So when I first, when I first started doing it, I like kind of like scope people out. And now I feel like that kind of gave me too much of a bias. So now I don't really anymore. I sometimes yeah. if I'm like, hmm, I kind of want to see like, you know, what their life is like, but otherwise I, I try not to rely too much on it. I love that because that lets, like you say, you can be creative, you know, and come up with your own because mm -hmm. I would assume that a lot of the people that reach out to you are capable of going to a thrift store themselves and finding stuff. Maybe they are reaching out to you like, I need to expand my, my style. I want to change my mm -hmm. style. Let me see what she sends me and maybe I'll try a different thing that I would normally never pick out for myself. I think that's yeah. fun. Yeah. Right. And that's, so, I mean, I think that is a lot of it too. Um, especially because like at first, so I would say like half my clients are people who just don't have any luck thrifting themselves and they don't really, or they don't really like it. It takes a long time. You know, I've heard, I've heard like thrift stores are smelly. I don't want to go in there, like that kind of thing. But the other half are people who love to thrift and they just want a fresh pair of eyes. Like you're really, when you do something like this, like you're really paying for somebody else's like eyes and like what they have in their head. Mm -hmm. Um, so they just want a whole fresh look. Like um, one of the girls who one of the coworkers um that I've done, like she is a avid thrifter herself. And so she wanted me to do a bundle for her. And I was kind of like, at first I was kind of like, well, you go all the time. Like, why are you <laughs> telling me to do something that you just do already? But she was like, no, I want you to go crazy. I want you to find things that you just think look like me. I'm not going to give you much input. I just want you to just go wild. And I was like, okay. So, all That's right. <laughs> fun. So do you, yeah. you don't have to say where, but do you have a favorite store that you're just like, you always find cool stuff? Yeah, I definitely have like, I'm lucky enough that I live in like a pretty central location where like there's like two or three thrift stores even like down the street from me and they're all like kind of done, done, done. So I don't have to travel very far like to just do a whole like series of thrifting in one night. Like I can just hit all the stores. So all the stores in my area honestly like usually have pretty good stuff. Like there's a thrift world that um, usually I find like really good vintage finds at. The problem is that um like they just had a price increase goodwill just had a price increase um so like there are certain stores that it's better for me to shop at to make a profit um but for oh, fines true. like yeah but for fines like i think that you know you can find something good like no matter where you go even if it's just one thing like usually i get pretty lucky and can find something somewhere yeah. So how does that work? I, I wasn't thinking that you were doing it for, <laughs> for money. How does well, that work? Like, how do you get yeah. paid? I mean, you just like, you give me 60 bucks to go spend and then I get the other 40 out of the hundred dollars or how does that work? I mean, you don't have um, to tell no. exact, but no, that's okay. Yeah. My, um, so like when I was going through my, um, menu options earlier, my like cut of that is in in that price so okay um so it's just like a blanket price so 200 dollars for the 10 to 12 pieces and then um obviously like well i don't spend on your clothes i keep and then shipping also is on the buyer so they pay me shipping too okay um, but like i already have factored in kind of like my cut from that so you're paying me to do the shopping and you're paying for the pieces in that price do i make a lot of money no <laughs> like to be honest like, no it's, it's a kind of a, of a passion yeah, it's more of a passion project than it is like lucrative, I would say, especially because I typically go overboard and that's more of a me problem than on the <laughs> client. Um, but they end up getting more than usually than what they pay for anyway. So like, yeah. It is so do it you is. do everything? Shirts, pants, shoes, earrings, mm -hmm. everything? Yeah, I haven't, um, I haven't sent any shoes yet. I wouldn't be opposed to it. Um, I have had, I have one girl right now who's like, well, if you find, you know, this pair of shoes, like I would be interested in that. I typically don't do shoes, but I do pretty much everything else. Um, it's not that I wouldn't send shoes. Uh, it's just that it's not usually what I go for right now. I'm a little bit more clothing based. Um, so I'm, I've done like belts and purses and things like that, but mainly it's going to be um, shirts, 
pants, dresses, skirts, like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Have you done it for a guy yet? Mm-hmm. Oh, you have. Yeah, I, I've done two men's clients uh, so far, and then I'm also working on one right now. I'm gonna probably film that one after we're done right now, and then send that out today. Hopefully, he lives in New York City, and I really loved his inspo. Um, but yeah, men's men's bundles are hard. They're a lot harder than than women's bundles. Men just don't donate the same way that women do. Um, Explain that. Of, like, Explain that. Yeah, like if you ever go into like a thrift store, like typically, and I'm not saying every thrift store, but typically the men's section is like this big, and the women's section is like this big. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's just true. The discrepancy is a lot because I think that typically men wear their clothes for a lot longer. Like, you, you know, men are like, oh, I've had this good old pair of jeans since 1959 and I don't plan on giving it up so true so and like and also like with women um you know we are so like trend driven um and men don't quite have like they don't quite operate under the same like trend cycle that we do like we're women like if it's out it's out if it's in it's in and that trend cycle is getting like way quicker so women donate at a like a way higher rate they go through their closets a lot more every season um and donate like just way at a way faster pace men are just like and men's clothes I sometimes I do feel like they are built to last longer too so they don't have reason to donate as much um so yeah, men's bundles can be, can be tricky. They are, they are tougher. I think I've found some good pieces and they typically take me a little bit longer too. Like this is currently my, oh, a coat. Um, there's, there's like a few. Yeah. He lives in New York city. And he, so he was specifically asked for some like colder pieces. Um, but yeah, there's like a few different like bundle pieces in there for other people too, but like that's some of his stuff. So yeah, men's men are, men are tricky. They're hard. That's so interesting. I was watching, I can't remember if it was a TikTok or what it was. It doesn't matter, but it was a girl that was thrifting um, for herself and she was looking for a nice structured jacket and she ended up in the men's section and she said more Mm -hmm. often than not jeans and jackets she gets in the men's section for herself because they make real regular jeans, not trendy jeans. They're not with the stretch. They're like just jeans and you can't find that even shopping now, you know, current stuff, yep. it's everything's got the stretch and, um, it is more like classic structured built to last items that are in the men's section. Mm-hmm. It's too bad. Absolutely. They don't make clothes for women like that. I mean, it is because of the trends, but for people that aren't trendy, it would be nice just to have your base structured staples. Yes. Yeah, the pair of jeans I'm wearing right now are men's Levi's from the thrift store. Um, they're like worn in, but they're still really nice. Um, and they're just, yeah, they're built to last. Like they don't, they just don't. I always made fun of my mom like growing up because she would always go buy men, like Levi's and Wranglers from like the men's section. And like, I thought that was so weird when I was <laughs> younger. And I'd go shopping with her and like, why are, you, why are you in the men's section? And she was just like, these are better jeans. They just are. And that is so true. And I find that to be like, I definitely shop for myself all the time in the men's section at the thrift store. Like um, sweaters typically also are like, they're way better quality for men. They're usually like a much higher like wool or cotton blend uh for women like it's more like recycled fibers and they're just not gonna last as long yeah so you said that goodwill raised their prices and so did what thrift world yeah yeah recently they both have like thrift world is kind of ridiculous right now i'm not gonna lie they kind of they're really they're really thinking that there's something and they have some great stuff which is, is the hard part because i usually find some really good stuff there but their prices are almost like too high for me to source there anymore just because like i it just, I won't make any money from it. Um, Goodwill still has pretty decent pricing for our area, but I just noticed that all their shirts went up by a dollar. So they were all three ninety nine, depending on like the length of the sleeve and like things like that. Brands, sometimes they'll take brand into consideration when they're pricing their stuff, but normally they were three ninety nine. Now they're all four ninety nine, which yeah, it's not a huge, it's not a huge no, deal. No, but, but it like, is. Every- that's the yeah. whole point. It's used clothes in most cases. You're not mm. always going to find stuff with tags. So oh, it's no. like, you know, yeah, three ninety nine, four ninety nine. That's an awesome bargain if it's brand new. But there's also mm-hmm. shirts that have pit stains or holes oh, in no. them, you know? So it's like that yeah. 
okay, good. Well, calm down. You know, it's supposed to be charity, you mm -hmm. know, dropping it off, donating, and then they're hiking their prices up. Have you yeah. found, do you, have you found like some item that you still can't believe you found when you were shopping, like some uh, high ticket Louis Vuitton? Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> no, not anything like typically like designer designer I will say I think like um thrift stores are getting smarter in that way where like they you can't really pull one over as easily as you could have like even just a few years ago I think that they really are like getting smarter about brands um but I did just find uh, a few days ago like these Jeffrey Campbell here I think I have them right over here but I don't even know these, that brand that's how out of these it guys they're oh my favorite these are for me um but so yeah they're, they're boots like boots with fabric yeah they have like a tapestry fabric um and they're originally like 200 something dollars um they're originally from anthropology and they are like just absolutely brand new like the sticker is still kind of on the bottom you can see there's no like wear yeah. there um this like they're so comfortable inside there's like suede and insole like it's just really nice they're really nice um but even they were probably even more than I should have paid because Goodwill was like, Ooh, <laughs> yep. These are someone, <laughs> someone's going to pay for these. And I ended up being that person, but, um, yeah, I do find. And then yesterday I went to a thrift store that I don't, I ha don't usually go to. It's not usually in my rotation. Um, but they're more of a local thrift store. So they have really reasonable prices. Um, and I found a dress that, I, I I recognize the label right away because um it's really popular it's um the oof, let me let me look here it's the Aster the label it's A S T R and okay. then the label is the name um and that's like a pretty popular brand for a lot of like girls my age like they love their dresses and I was always like oh my god like I wish I could wear one of those to like a wedding and mm -hmm. then I just found one yesterday it was $4.99 I looked it up and it was originally like $160 for the dress so like that's always fun wow do you go to estate sales and stuff too I haven't lately um I see a lot of TikToks and I have I have friends that really love estate sales um but like typically like I'm in the salon industry obviously so like I work on Saturdays normally so then we're like, there like on the weekends and I just don't make it but you can find some really awesome stuff from estate sales yeah. Well, okay. So tell people how they can find you if they want to um, sign up and, and how have you style them? Yeah. So you can always go on um, TikTok. It's just dressed by Danny. Um, otherwise, um, Instagram too. Like I share both the reels on TikTok to Instagram and, and Instagram is just dressed by underscore Danny. Um, and yeah, you just fill out the form, let me know, and then I'll send you the menu and then I do have people send me obviously like their inspiration from their Pinterest boards and things like that so that we can have like a visual um example and then we just go through the process and easy as that that's awesome well I know you took off some time um around Christmas so you could actually have a life um so <laughs> how long does it take for somebody to go through the process how long does it usually take for the turnaround yeah that's a good question like it was I was doing two weeks um and then I just found that like typically it was it was good I still found like great stuff in that time but it just wasn't quite long enough like I would find I would ship off a bundle and then the next day I would go thrifting and then I'd find I'd be like oh my god that piece would have been perfect to put in that bundle but I already shipped it off so now I asked for four weeks um just to make sure that I'm taking my time I'm looking everywhere that I can um and so typically it's like a four-week turnaround sometimes less if I can find everything pretty quick but just yeah depends. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm so excited for you. I just think it's so cool to watch that you pull out that rack and show all the different <laughs> items. And, and then I saw a couple where the, the person showed what they got and, you know, just how they smile, yeah. they're like so grateful. Yeah. And it's just like, that's really cool. It's having somebody else's outside perspective. We can't all afford a personal stylist. So it's pretty neat to see what creative things you can use and it keeps you creative too. So that's really fun. Sure. Awesome. Thank you so much, Danny. It was so good to see you. I'm so Thank happy you for, for you. Me. Of course. Yeah. Cool. And um, we'll be in touch soon. Okay. Okay. All Thank right, you. Bye. Appreciate All right, it. Bye. Good to see ya. See ya.